Goodwin. I go to Ralston. Um, before I begin, I want to say that this poem does have a trigger warning. And if you do need to get up in the middle of my poem as I'm reading, please go ahead. I will understand. And I'll be out there afterwards to give you hugs. <sighs> my poem is titled, Letter to God. When are you going to ask forgiveness from daddy's little princess? What do you have to say to mama's baby girl when her innocence was stolen away? What do you do when young daughters beg, cry, plead, and pray for each second minute, hour, day, every year, every decade to pass by quicker? Because this memory is like a hairline trigger. Anything could become a reminder of the time a stranger raped her. I was only eight the first time I was touched. A stranger renting my aunt's, my aunt's basement had built me a fort made of chairs, blankets, and pillows, a private fort for me to stack books against flimsy cotton cloth walls. What I thought to be a promising sanctuary turned out to become a repressed and faded memory of unwanted hands beneath my clothes. I made no sounds. I paid no attention to those hands. I kept on reading, hoping for time to quicken, hoping for God to show. You never showed. I went on with life, pushing back that moment as far to the back of my mind as it could go. Running away from those nights, I lay in bed and feel ghost hands gliding along my skin again. And in a selfish attempt to numb those hands, I retreat to self-medication's embrace, as though the pills, blunts, bottles, and blades were a long-lost lover. Who would have thought that this lover would be the reason I'd sob your name again? God, I bet you didn't think it happened again. On a warm June night, I'm a typical girl of only 17 that just wanted some fun. I didn't think all that weed and all that rum would betray me. I didn't think there would be something slipped in my drink. I just didn't think. And now I have a new memory of different hands, a memory scorching my mind's eye. I still feel his undesired touch on my bare body. I still feel those hands, regardless of how hard I try to forget the hazy kisses and being carried downstairs, my clothes frantically stripped and flung onto the floor, soundless screams as he forces his way into me, his ragged breath, my name dripping from his drunken tongue, my body tensing my unspoken prayer, waiting to be answered. God, why are you so quiet? Stop playing this damn silent game. Are you, am I deaf or are you ignoring me because you never showed up when I was screaming your name the first, second, or third time? Yes, God, there was a third time, but you don't seem to care. You never appear on the nights I feel invisible hands on my body. You are never there when the flashbacks happen and I'm praying, dear God, just let it be over. It's horrible the moment it happens but it's fucking cruel to unwillingly relive it over and over and over again. God, what did I do to deserve this punishment? God, I know I'm a sinner. Stop giving me the silent treatment. I needed you. Why did you never help me? I needed you to save me, especially on the nights I'd slit my wrist, adorning it with broken promises. God, do you even exist? Are you a mere figment of the imagination? God, if you do exist, then when will you realize that no matter how sincerely you apologize, I will never forgive you.